Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the 2021 Macroeconomics Set 1 FRQs. Uh, I'm gonna go over the answers as best I can. This is an unboxing video. The questions were just used on the Macroeconomics exam two days ago, and I've done my best to come up with my own uh, thoughts and opinions on what the answers likely are going to be. I don't know what the answers are truly gonna be when it comes to the rubrics. Uh, these are my best guesses. Uh, I have no inside information. I don't work for the college board or anything like that. So these are my best guesses, uh, uh, but I hope you will find the, these, uh, uh, these answers informative and let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so question number one on set one. We are going to assume that the economy of Sweden is in long run equilibrium and it has a surplus in the current account. First thing we have to do is say, is, or answer the question, is the Swedish capital and financial account in deficit, in surplus, or in balance? And we must explain. And remember, explain means you need to connect it to the math or to the graph. So here's my answer to that question. It's a deficit, and it's because, connecting it to the math here, the sum of the current account and the capital and financial account is always zero. So when one account is in surplus, the other is in a deficit. And that's important to remember that anytime you have an increase in the capital, capital and financial account, you will have a decrease in the current account and vice versa. On to part B, we're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the short run aggregate supply curve, long run aggregate supply curve and aggregate demand curves for Sweden. And we will show the current equilibrium real output. We will label it Y1 and the current equilibrium price level labeled PL1. And since this economy is currently in long run equilibrium, this is what our ASAD model looks like. We will have all three curves intersecting and Y1 will be equal to the full employment output. So it will be right underneath that vertical long run aggregate supply curve. Also make sure you mark the current equilibrium price level. That's at the intersection of aggregate demand and the short run aggregate supply. It happens to be the intersection of the long run aggregate supply curve here as well because we are in long run equilibrium. On to the next part. For part C, we're going to assume that the United Kingdom increases its imports from Sweden. Now on our graph in part B, we're going to show the new equilibrium real output. We will label that Y2 and the new equilibrium price level labeled PL2 as a result of the change in imports from the United Kingdom or to the United Kingdom really. So uh, this is, remember, this is a uh, ASAD model graph for Sweden. And since the United Kingdom is importing less, that means that Sweden is going to be exporting less. Exports are an aggregate demand shifter. And since there are going to be fewer exports, that will shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, decreasing the price level and decreasing the quantity of real output. So we're going to go ahead and mark both of those Y2 and PL2. For part D, as a result of the decrease in the United Kingdom's imports from Sweden, would policymakers in Sweden be more concerned about cyclical unemployment or inflationary pressures in the long run? And we have to explain here again. And I say cyclical because output is now less than the full employment output. As a result of that decrease in exports for Sweden, that's going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the left. And now we have a recessionary gap and that would be a concern, much more of a concern than inflationary pressures. In fact, their inflationary pressures would have been reduced as a result of that leftward shift of the AD curve. Next, if Sweden, if the Swedish central bank's goal is to return the economy to long run equilibrium, what open market operation should it use? Remember, open market operations are just two things, buying bonds and selling bonds. These are actions of the Federal Reserve and it's specific to, it's not the discount rate, it's not the reserve requirement, it's buying bonds or selling bonds. That's it, all right? And so remember that our concern here is the unemployment rate. And since the unemployment rate is too high, thanks to that leftward shift of the aggregate demand curve, buying bonds will increase that money supply, driving down interest rates, increasing gross investment, and some consumer spending, and that will increase the aggregate demand curve, closing the recessionary gap we have now. If the currency in the United Kingdom is the pound and the currency of Sweden is the krona, draw, the correct, draw a correctly labeled graph of the foreign exchange market for the krona 
and show the impact of the, in, of the decrease in the United Kingdom's imports from Sweden on the value of the Krona in the foreign exchange market. All right, so here's what I got here. This is a leftward shift of the demand curve and it's because the United Kingdom is decreasing its imports from Sweden, which means it will be demanding fewer uh, units of Swedish currency, or the Krona in this case. That's going to drive down the uh, equilibrium exchange rate and decrease the equilibrium quantity in that exchange rate. If the Swedish central bank's goal is to reverse the exchange rate change that we showed just then in part F by changing the interest rate, what open market operation should it use? So we just saw the exchange rate uh, decreased and now we want it to increase again. So the way we're going to do that is by selling bonds because that's going to increase the interest rate. And when that interest rate is higher, then foreign investors will go ahead and seek that higher interest rate and start demanding Swedish currency again. So now we're going to explain that for part H. We're going to explain how the open market operation that I just identified in part G would reverse the change in the exchange rate. And so here's my answer here. Selling those bonds will decrease the money supply, increasing the nominal interest rate. That's in the money market, uh, money market graph. The foreign investors will seek that higher interest rate and increase the demand for the Krona as a result of seeking that higher interest rate. On to question number two. Here we are going to assume that a country is currently operating below full employment. I see a little bit of trouble in the phrasing here, but uh, I, I think that people could interpret this two different ways. On the one hand, oper uh, they, people could think that this uh, means that the unemployment rate is below the full employment rate of unemployment, but I don't believe that is how the College Board uh, meant for this question to be interpreted. I think the correct interpretation will be that the amount of output within the economy is less than the full employment output. That's how I read this here. And that's what I'm basing my answers moving forward on this uh, based on. All right. So uh, we're going to first identify the policy action of, uh, of that the country's government could implement to restore full employment. All right. So remember that this is expansionary fiscal policy we're looking for to close this recessionary gap because they are operating below full employment, and that would be decreasing taxes, or you could have said increasing spending. Either one of those answers will be fine. Don't mention anything about the money market, uh, uh, the, uh, the monetary policy actions of the reserve requirement or open market operations. Those aren't what they're looking for here. It's fiscal policy action, which is just changes in taxes or changes in spending. On to part B, we're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the loanable funds market now, and we will show the effect of that fiscal policy action that we identified on the equilibrium interest rate. All right. So remember that we are going to be decreasing taxes or increasing spending. That means that the government is going to have to borrow more. As a result, we're going to see the demand for loanable funds increase. You could, by the way, also decrease the supply of loanable funds. Either of those shifts are perfectly acceptable. But either shift must drive up that real interest rate in the loanable funds market. And so I have a shift of the demand curve here, and that is going to increase the equilibrium real interest rate. Next up, we have based on their, they're giving us a lot of clues in, in this year's questions. Ignore all other changes that may have existed just the real interest rate is all we're looking at here. So solely based on that real interest rate shown in part B, what will happen to each of the following? First of all, net exports, and we have to explain that, and let's do that one first. So here's my answer. Net exports are going to decrease, and that's because foreign investors are going to seek that high interest rate, and uh, that will increase the demand for the country's currency. Right. This is a long answer, a lot of steps in here. All right. uh, the appreciation of that currency will make imports less expensive and exports for, consumer, for foreign consumers cheaper. And as a result, net exports is going to decrease. Right? There's a chain of events getting from that interest rate change to the impact on, on uh, net exports, but that's the chain of events and it's something that shows up on the AP exam here and there.
but it is a tricky one to get right there, all right? Next, we're going to look at the second part where we have to explain the impact on the stock of physical capital. And again, we're going to explain here. I do think that the wording of this one is a little bit tricky, uh, but the a higher interest rate will cause a decrease in gross investment. And that will, I think the best term is it will slow the growth of capital stock. I think they're going to accept a decrease as well, but uh, there will be less investment, but there would still be some investment. So I would, I think the best terminology here is slowing the growth on the capital stock. The capital stock is the amount of physical capital within an economy. On to question number three. So in flower land, we have an open economy with a flexible exchange rate regime. The natural rate of unemployment is 5%. The frictional un rate of unemployment is 4%. And the current actual rate of unemployment is 7%. First of all, we have to calculate the numerical value of the cyclical unemployment rate in flower land. So here's my answer here. We're going to take the 7% current actual rate of unemployment and we are going to subtract the natural rate of unemployment which is frictional plus structural right so that four percent is already in there so that four percent is a distractor by the way and that gives us two percent for our cyclical unemployment rate and you have to show your math here make sure you set up the formula and come up with your answer on to part b we're going to assume that the foreign demand for lavender oil that is produced in flower land increases, what will happen to each of the following in, the, in flower land in the short run? The first thing is aggregate demand, and we're going to explain that one. So let's see, I'm going to increase aggregate demand, and that's because there's an increase in net exports. Remember, net exports is our aggregate demand shifter, all right, and that includes exports minus imports. So since there's an increase in foreign demand, that will be an increase in the exports of lavender oil and so that will increase aggregate demand all right as far as cyclical unemployment cyclical unemployment remember is the difference between the natural rate of unemployment and our current rate it's the amount because of a recession and as we just saw we have some cyclical unemployment that means we have a recessionary gap and that rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve will increase our real output in the asad model and that correlates to lower unemployment. So we will see a decrease in that cyclical unemployment rate. Next up, we got a little bit of a tricky math one. This is a CPI calculation. We have a table that shows the market basket quantities and prices of lavender oil and roses. And uh, they are the only two good goods that are produced in flower land. And we have that table here with our numerical values. And we have to assume that 2019 is the base year. And based on the data in this table, we're going to calculate the price index for the year 2020 in Flowerland, all right? And we're going to show our work here. So here's my math here. We're going to first calculate the market basket value in 2019, 40 units of lavender oil times the $3 that it costs. Then we're going to multiply the four quantities of roses or units of roses times the $20. That equals $200. That's the base year value of this market basket. When we calculate it all again using the 2020 prices. That's our nominal year or the current year prices. And that gives us 260. The formula I like to use is nominal divided by real times 100. And that gives us 130. That is the CPI or consumer price index number there, right? And there's the math behind it. Now for part D, if the nominal income in flower land increased by 20% from 2019 up to 2020, will the standard of living of average citizen in a flower land increase decrease or stay the same from 2019 to 2020 and again we're going to explain here so since we went remember the base year over here back to this one uh, the base year is always going to be a cpi of 100 so if you could do your new minus old divided by old times 100 we would see that the cpi going from 100 up to 130 means that there was 30 percent inflation between 2019 and 2020 and so if nominal incomes increased by 20%, but inflation was 30%, well, the change in income did not keep up pace with inflation. And as a result, everybody in this economy will be on average worse off. So the average standard of living will decrease because, connecting it to, connecting it to the math or the graph here, the nominal increase, 20%, is less than the amount of inflation, which is 30%. 
right, the uh, buying power would have been reduced by approximately 10%. All right. And there you have it. That is our, that is my uh, unboxing of the 2021 uh, set one macroeconomics questions. Um, and I hope that these were valuable for you. I know the year's over, but hopefully you did pretty well. And uh, um, if you uh, are looking at this next year, please take a look at reviewweekon.com. Check out my other videos. I, I, they're a little better edited than this one. I'm trying to get this one out as quick as I can. And of course, if you want to support this channel, purchase the total review booklet from reviewecon.com. It has all kinds of activities and practice questions, it has cheat sheets, graph cheat sheets, formula cheat sheets, and all kinds of other stuff to help you do well on the AP microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.